You know what I'm saying? I, I remember that straight out. And uh, when I went there, uh, them niggas got in a fight. And I remember Yayo yeah, had a cash in his hand. I guess he said he was trying to cut a hole in his belt or some shit, nigga. So the nigga threw a chair at dude. Dude caught the chair. Uh, Yayo yeah, caught the chair. Um, the dude, I don't know. I think Yayo yeah, threw the chair because 50 had an in-house pool. So them niggas is in there fighting. This is my first day there, nigga. I'm just out here like, okay. So then the next morning, he had like a phone uh, in each one of the rooms. And uh, I was sleeping in the sun bed actually. And he had he had a uh, he, he said anybody in the house come to the conference room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I walk out, nigga. We all sitting there's bitches in there. We all me, hot rod. We all sitting at this long ass table. Just sitting in the conference room. This nigga walk in just like this. <laughs> this nigga walk in like he just got through working out, had a hoodie on. You know what I'm saying? He like yeah yo yeah yo right here, dude right here. He like, so what happened? <laughs> Nobody say nothing. He like, so what happened? Then Yayo like, no son, call me a pussy. <laughs> so he go, he going through that talk. So 50 had like this big ass glass back door that faced his back door. I mean, faced his backyard and shit. So as Yayo talking, this nigga put his hand on the glass like this, nigga. <laughs> and he was like, what's the rules of my house? <laughs> he was like, it ain't no fighting. He's like, Monday I'm calling, uh, he said, I'm calling uh, Jimmy, you going to get him. Like, you're kicking him off the label, nigga, walked out. I was like, God damn. So this was my first time meeting dude like that, you know what I'm saying? And um, when he did that, everybody was quiet. Everybody at the table was quiet. We sat there for like 30 minutes before anybody said anything. I was like, yo, is it over? You know what I'm saying? Everybody, I guess so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we all got up. So that was my first time, that was my first experience over there. That was cool. But what happened in 50 house, and uh, Felony was just asking me this question. You know, it's a lot of rumors. I know. It's a lot of rumors. I know, they said I was selling drugs at 50 house. They said you had to pack up in the mansion. They said you had to pack in the, in the I'm gonna tell it. They said Willie Norpole had to pack in Mike Tyson old mansion that 50 Cent bought. They said you was down by the bowling alley. So these niggas said, the, these niggas said. Wrapping loads in the bowling alley. Yeah, they hey, said you had the bowling alley. You was really with the These niggas balls. said I was selling, these niggas said I was selling drugs out of 50 Cent house. <laughs> hey, that's the word on the streets. Clear it up. Let them know right here on so, Freeze TV exclusive. What Freeze happened? Freeze TV exclusive. What happened was, I just had asked 50, like, two days, keep this in mind, I just asked him like a week before, cause I was, at, when I when I was, even just before I got signed. So when I was fucking 50, I was still getting free clothes sent to me. So I just had asked him, you know, is it cool if I start getting shit sent to the house? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you want to hear it? Do you want me to send it to the g unit office? You know what I'm saying? He's like, you can get it to the house. So I'm getting mail sent to this nigga house. You know what I'm saying? So this is, that's the backstory of that. So anyways, I'm on the phone one day and uh, I'm talking to, I'm try, I think I was trying to get my little brother Rod to work or something. I get off the phone. I'm like, you know, yeah, he downstairs. I'm talking to a chick on the phone in Arizona. I'm waiting in New York, uh, Connecticut, you know what I'm saying? And then I was like, yeah, you know, uh, woo wop woo wop you go downstairs, she gonna be upstairs. So I guess it sounded like I was doing a drug deal. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so when I got off the phone, uh, R.P. Maserati Fox, but Fox Fox was there. I don't know if y'all know who Fox is. He was like 50, one of his main niggas. Fox just got out of jail, just got out of prison for murder. You know what I'm saying? He's turning up, slapping motherfuckers as soon as he got out and shit. You know what I'm saying? But when I first met Fox in 50 House, he was in a wheelchair because I guess they was riding the four wheelers and he just had uh, ran over something. So when I'm in the studio, this nigga scooting down, excuse me, this nigga scooting down to what's the name? Oh, let me put my shoes down here. This nigga's scooting down the uh, steps. You know what I'm saying? That's the first time I meet Fox. So I helped him downstairs. And then uh, we was in Staten Island. And this is when 50 was beefing with everybody. The locks was there and we, like the crowd was throwing shit, going crazy and shit, you know. And uh, I'm pushing Fox out the way. So at this time, me and him, cool. You know what I'm saying? He, he, was, he was one of the realest niggas, but this was my nigga too though. You know what I'm saying? So we was cool at this time. But so when I did that little phone call or whatever, as soon as I got off the phone, he was like, yo, you selling drugs out of 50 house? I was like, what? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, nigga, what you talking about? He's like, okay, I'm just letting you know, man, if you're trying to do that, man, 50 is saying you pass Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, and I'm like, nigga, no, nah, nigga, I'm not. It don't even matter. So I just brush it off like boom. So then we get flown out. We get flown out to Detroit. This is the first time that Eminem and 50 Cent did a song together for that Who Wanted video. And we went out there for the video, the two day video shoot. So when we was out there, the whole time, like everything was cool. And then the second day, them niggas was at the video shoot. They left me in the hotel. I'm like, what the fuck? So I called Rod. I'm like, what's going on, nigga? Where y'all at? He's like, man, I gotta talk to you when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. Time for you to go home. Yeah, he's like, I gotta talk to you. Get back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm really gone. I said, I gotta talk to you, and I get back. I was like, I was like, he was, I was like, all right. Long story short, uh, he came. He's like, man, I gotta ask you something, man. I'm like, what, nigga? He at the hotel. They was coming to pick me up. He's like, what you selling drugs out of Fifty House? <laughs> I'm like, nigga. So I already knew what it was. I already knew where it came from. So I was like, oh, man, this bitch ass nigga fuck. So that was the first thing I said. Yeah. I said, no, nigga. I said, wooty wop. I said, hold on. So I called a chick. I said, what did I have you do Monday? And she was like, you told me to go wooty wop pick up your bro? And I just hung up on her. I'm like, see? He's like, oh, man, this nigga done told 50. You selling drugs in his house and all kind of shit. <laughs> And so, I, and so, uh, did you ever clear that up with 50? I'm gonna tell you about it. We there. So, we get, so he's like, man, you just gotta explain that to him when you see him, because this nigga already got your plane ticket to go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga gotta go now. Like, this nigga done already booked you a flight. This nigga don't even know your date of birth, man. Look, How this nigga book you a flight? Well, he fucked know. with me, though, for some reason, though. He was fucking with me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was, he was a real nigga. Because you got flow though. Yeah, he was fucking with me. So. You got real flow though. And so when I got there, he's shot, related to you. So Shot Money picked us up in the hotel, I think. Shout out Shot Money. Shot Money. And uh, so when we got there, Banks, Buck, Stat Quo, Young Buck, all these niggas was in one room. And uh, and Shot Money was like, tell them what happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm, so I'm telling these niggas what happened and shit. This is why I fuck with Banks, because Banks was like, uh, I don't, you know, Fox is dead right now, so I ain't trying to really, you know, talk bad about his name. But uh, Banks was like, everybody was scared of Fox. You know what I'm saying? Like, not me, but I'm just saying, everybody was like, guess from his history that everybody was like, like I said, he was getting out slapping niggas and shit. And uh, <laughs> Fox, Banks was the first nigga to say, man, I'm getting tired of that nigga Fox, man, for real. I'm getting tired of that shit, man. That's some bullshit. Like, that's why I fucked with Banks, because he never really talked. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, he, uh, so he, uh, I told him, so this nigga, yeah, y'all smoking a blunt. Look, yeah, y'all smoking a blunt. He's like, you just, you just got a bag, son. I'm like, nigga, I'm not, I'm like, what? You got a bag. This nigga said, I got a bag. I said, like I said, this is Eminem. Yeah, you said you got a bag. This, hey, man. This is Eminem's first. That's why he, that's, that's probably why yeah, you're with 50 like that, though. <laughs> he said, you got a bag, G. I'm like, man, this nigga, I just what I told him. I said, this nigga buy y'all Bentleys and shit. Because I've been to Banks' house, all that he shit. He was trying to get you a Bentley, though. Yeah. He showed you how to get yeah, you he a was, he, was tell, he was just being real, you know what I'm saying? But it was just like, nah, nigga, I'm going to tell this nigga what happened. So, like I said, this is Eminem and this Eminem first video shoot with 50. So, BT there, MTV there. It's everybody. crazy. So, he busy. So, for me to talk to him about this little petty shit, yeah, it's, really it's, it's a wrap. Time. And then the plane leaving at five. You know what I'm saying? So, I had to figure it out how I was going to do this. I'm like, I'm, so, this nigga uh, was eating a burrito or some shit. He had some uh, people in the, uh, I think his publicist was in the cafeteria was eating. So, I just said, fuck it, nigga. I just walked up in there. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, you mind if I holler at you for a minute? You know what I'm saying? He said, yeah. So the girl was like, you want me to leave? And he's like, no, you can stay. And I was like, man, let me tell you something, bro. I said, nigga, I've done some shit in my life, but I would be a stupid motherfucker to be getting drugs sent to your house, my nigga. That's not even how I do it. I don't send shit to myself. I said, when I do that type shit, you know what I'm saying? I said, I don't do that. He's like, oh, man, no, no. So he did that little laugh. He was like, he said, I ain't think, he said, it ain't that I think you selling drugs out the house. He's like, it's more, uh, 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 
This is Fox on the rap. <laughs> That's what he said. He's like Fox on the rap. You know what I'm saying? So I guess Fox was just a little jealous of us. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was like, so I just, I just, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. He said she was sending packs. You know what I'm saying? You did ask me if I could get some mail sent to me. You know what I'm saying? Blah blah blah. He was like, but I just kind of said, you know. You gotta stand like he gave me like this shit like that's my homie telling me this so you cool but if you tell me something like that i'm just gonna get rid of a problem before it become a problem i didn't even want to you know what i'm saying well whatever the fuck he was saying the whole time i'm thinking like you know your homie's on some bullshit though you know what i'm saying period nigga you know so that happened and so he's like i ain't gonna send you home man he said what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you on rock, uh, hot rod in the uh, New York penthouse. He put us like in some penthouse or some shit, right? And Rod was happy. Rod, let, Rod, nobody liked to be in 50 house because you can't bring bitches there. You can't, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get lost in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It was all kind of shit. You know what I mean? And uh, so I was mad that Rod was happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I wanted, I wanted to stay there. You know, I wanted to work. We had an in-house engineers. You know what I'm saying? All that shit. It's your girl, oh, it's my girl. So, um, so at that time, uh, my manager Tiffany was already in my ear off the garbage. I kind of skipped that part a little bit. So when I did garbage disposal, uh, Tiffany Johnson was all the way in, I think Atlanta or New York. And she was trying to figure out who this dude Willie North Pole was. I used to have a crush on Tiffany when I was 10 years old. We used to go to summer camp together. Family tree. Yeah. So how did you end up? Let's go back then. Let's go we'll back. come back. Cause we don't okay, need we'll, come back. we'll, we'll come, come back. back. We'll come back to that. Trapping, but Family okay. Tree, cause they, cause Family Tree played a major role. Yeah, in your career. I, I met Family Tree Entertainment. So I met Tiffany when I was about ten years. I, can't, I think she was thirteen and I was ten. And I met her at a summer camp. And I just, she was like the finest girl at the camp. You know what I'm saying to me. And uh, so I had a crush on her that whole year. And then my cousin ended up fucking with her. Man, I'm going to whoop your ass. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> so Tiffany and my cousin, man, ended up dating for like nine years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I never really seen her around or nothing like that. But she was kind of like considered family and shit like that. And then when I did the garbage disposal, uh, she found out it was me. Or she, or she was looking for me, whoever that was. And then she found me. And then at that time, I was like going into the whole 50 cent transition. So she was really like watching, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So but when I got to 50 House, she was the one who was uh, basically saying, I can get your record deal somewhere else. That's how I ended up. Hold on. I'm going too far. Yeah, so okay. we in let's Brooklyn go, now. Now, okay. now we back right, to our go, time. Let's go, let's we, go. We, <laughs> we in New York, we in the it's penthouse. It's getting good, it's getting good. Yeah, we in New York in the penthouse right now. 50 just sent your ass up out of there. He yeah. got you up out of the spot. You want to record, but Hot Rod really happy because now he get to kick it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But Tiffany on your line though, like, bro, yeah. I can get you this deal. Tiffany deer. like, fuck that. Leave that yeah, shit. Yeah, like, fuck Come that out shit. I can. So now we tie it all together. Yeah, it's all tied together. Okay. So Tiffany's on my line now. And she's uh basically saying, you know, you know, it's cool to say you at 50, it's cool to say you at 50 house, it's cool to say this, it's cool to say that. She's like, I can get you a record deal for real. Eight ball in the corner pocket. Let's and get so, this over with. Nope. Nigga focus too. Oh, oh I gave him the game. Yeah. Oh, I, gave I don't even know if I can get to it. <laughs> I gave him the game, y'all. Nope, I ain't even trying to act. Oh, no. I done gave him the game, man. Yeah. How I get beat by Billy North Pole? He gonna scratch or something. Oh, he gonna jump it over the top. Oh. And I win. <laughs> Fuck with it, <laughs> two and zero, oh, still undefeated. You know what I'm saying? Still I'm undefeated. Pop that motherfucker! I'm supposed to pop that motherfucker. Still. So uh. Um, still, hold on. Let me take my jacket. Man, fuck. Off. Let me take my I jacket off. I sure want to shut this nigga up. You know what I'm saying? Let me take my jacket off, man. Let I me. I sure want to shut this nigga up, motherfucker. Man, let me take my jacket off. Now we can really get into this interview, though. 
So, good shit, good shit. Good shit. Yeah, good shit. No, now no, we can no, really, shit, no. now we can really get into Let it. Let me get over there. Let me get over there. Really. So now look, <laughs> hold on, where my beer? I hate losing, man. Hey, go your drink. We need some All more. Right, let's talk. We, we, yeah, yeah. Let's let's chop it up now. We now we really. So need Tiffany some, on my line. I need some something to smoke. Tiffany on your. So now I gotta tell. Is that me or you? Man, my car. Oh, let's see. Hold on, let me see what the fuck that shit is. We a J cut. Oh man. Let's throw my shit. Hold on. Fuck is my king. That's my car? That's your car? Okay. So uh oh, that thing in my pocket then. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me tell you. That whole time. Look at that man. That shit got me mad, so I ain't gonna lie to you. Man, I'm glad I won. Boy, that I was you I glad. Cannot lose. I know you glad, nigga. You can't lose on your own platform, man. Nah, oh, man, I would have been I would have been like, I'm the only nigga that beat that nigga <laughs> up in there. Hey, but look. I've been working out on my right arm, man. Like mostly, you know what I'm saying? I, no, but anyways, we was out there, man. She called me and uh, she was like, you need to leave that nigga house. <laughs> and at first I was like, hell no. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She's like, you gotta believe in yourself. So I had to have a talk for 50 cent, nigga, about sending me home. Cause at this time he wasn't sending me home. He was just letting it chill out between me and Fox. We was yeah. in a, you know what I'm saying? Put you in a penthouse. Let y'all chill you know for a minute. You know. Enjoy, enjoy the East Coast. Yeah. Live a little. That type of situation. So, I had to go have a talk with that nigga. And that was like the hardest thing to do because at this time, bro, like, I did not want to leave, bro. Because I, I knew, because he wanted to make us like the new G unit. That's what he was trying to call it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some other shit. And, uh, so I, uh, I left, nigga. I went and had a talk with him, nigga. He's like, you show? I was like, you know, I was just like, you know, I just want to see, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. Like, for real, my nigga, this shit was like, but I need to get back to the house, man. You know, I got some, <laughs> some shit to take care of. You know what I'm saying? And he just, well, you hadn't signed yet. so I wasn't was, signed. Yeah, yeah I wasn't signed yet. But Hot Rod was stuck. Yeah, he was stuck. He's not in there, man. And, excuse me, so, so, so how did, how did leaving actually happen? How did that actually? So I, so he basically sent me home a few days after that. I asked him for a ticket. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I got home, six months later, nigga, pretty much I had a record deal, nigga. She was right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How was, and, yeah. and who, who'd, you, who'd you eventually sign with? I know, I was at the signing party. I read the contract before yeah. you signed it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm. Mean, I remember you was like, I remember on the uh, video, you like, what'd you say? <laughs> you said something. Hey, I was talking shit. That nigga was talking shit the whole time. <laughs> I was there. I, w I witnessed this. That's history, bro. Like, I witnessed this. You can that. watch that on YouTube, actually. And, uh, and I want to um, say thank you for just even allowing us to part. even be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was saying? big for me, bro. Yeah, for bro. me, like, For me, that was for like. For the city. I didn't Everybody even, else snuck away and got a deal. It wasn't as big as I thought as far as the business part of it. Cause I, I But for me. My, my lifetime goal was you was to ask my little brother, you know what I'm saying? He'll tell you, he's like, bro, when bro was writing, the whole house would just leave because they, nobody was disturbing when he was writing. You know what I'm saying? I was just always serious about that part. You know what I'm saying? Right. So he was like, I see why you that nigga, why you was the first to do that part. You know what I'm saying? To actually, so when I went to the, uh, I had a, a CTE looking at me. I had a, Man, I'm so glad you didn't go to CTE. I had a... Uh, None of they artists ain't so, so, nothing. So, so Dev, I think we stopped by So, so Dev, we stopped by Jazzy Faye, and we stopped that by would have been interesting. DTP Dev Jam. Yeah. And what's so dope about you, you didn't even sign with DTP, well, you signed with DTP, yeah. but you was one of the only artists that had a direct deal mm -hmm. with Dev Jam. Yeah, me and, uh, on, on DTP, me and Bobby, Bobby Valentino was the only, cause they just kicked Sharifa off there, Jim. Mm -hmm. So, I was the only artist, and uh, 2 Chainz and them, they, they kicked them off their jam too. And so when I got to DTP, I think me, I wanna say me, 
and Bobby Valentino. We was the only artists that was DTP Def Jam at that time, if, if I'm not mistaken. And that's crazy. See, people don't be understanding that. How it'd be associations, it'd be publishing deals, it'd be... Um, I never signed a pub deal, but go ahead. It'd be, yeah, it'd be label slash partnerships. It'd be totally different ways that you can be associated with a, with a bigger entity. Right. Rather than just always being signed as an artist to right. this. You know what I mean? Right, right. So break that down to the people who who, who watching it now. So who, basically, who basically, how does your deal work out? Like, so how? basically, you got when I get a check, like I still get royalties. When I get a royalty check, it says Universal Music. Universal Music is like the universe. Then it has a bunch of little countries inside of it. You know what I'm saying? You got uh, Def Jams, uh, Interscopes. You got I think Interscope's on Universal Music, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you got these, because, uh, uh, oh, Interscope was an option, too. We stopped by Interscope, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But, um, uh, so I got these bunch of little worlds, I mean, these countries. So, what country are you from, you know what I'm saying, is, is the major label. That's the country. And then you got the states inside of that country, like, you know what I'm saying? You got, in Def Jam, you have So So Def. You have uh, DTP, you have CTE, you had shit, everybody. Whoever Mariah <laughs> Carey was on. Yeah, I used yeah. to walk by all their offices and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, Island Def Jam, Drew Hill, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was on that. And um, so the office was in there. So I ended up going to the branch of Disturbing the Peace, which was Ludacris's branch. Shaka Zulu, Jeff Dixon. Shout out Shock. Yeah. Shaka Zulu was one of the greatest minds in the hip hop. Mm -hmm. But keep going. How this works is, so, damn, this is, I'm not, I'm not gonna skip nothing. Anything come to my mind, I'm gonna tell you. So when I did yeah, the whole, so I ended up getting signed to DTP. I do this whole album, right? I can't use n literally none of the music that I already did, I couldn't put on the album. And the reason I couldn't put the music on the album. Why you couldn't put that? Because of Big U, respectfully. Big U, uh, Shaka had just got a tour with T.I. They was fighting out there. And I was mad I wasn't there, I ain't gonna lie. Cause when I was out there, nigga, I was, I couldn't wait. I was ready to prove my shit. Nigga, I remember one time I was pushing niggas out. Uh, uh, Shaka was talking to his little sister and some nigga was on his sister, nigga. I came out, I was just looking for any reason to let them niggas know, nigga, this is how I get down. <laughs> that was just my attitude yeah, at that serious. at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I wasn't there for that fight, nigga, I was mad as fuck. I ain't gonna lie to you. So this nigga was like, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call Big U. And I'm like, bro, like, I didn't know who Big U was. At that time, I think he had another name. You know what I'm saying? And uh I was like, why you calling Big U? Let's go get these niggas. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Like this at at that time, Atlanta wasn't really I remember my nigga Slim Calhoun, I asked him, I said, is there any gangs out here? He said, hell no. So that I don't know. Crazy. Huh? No, I watched. You feel me now? No, me living in Atlanta from <laughs> 2012 to about 2016, I watched the transition. It's like, the younger generation, yeah, huh? Yeah, I watched Atlanta life. And I started telling the older dudes who gang banging. You knew what was coming up. I told them, I said, now when they start dying around here, when y'all start having yep, a they, bunch of funerals. I was in Atlanta for two years living. Not one nigga dying like that. No, no niggas was dying like that. Now they like to go to the club too, but. You know what I'm saying? And the only nigga that was gang banging, I think, was Jeezy. He was a crip or some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that was like an anomaly. When I was out there. BMF. Yeah. But go ahead, though. So, so um, get back to the deal. So, so we out there, and uh, so Big U, so Shaka called Big U out there, Big U come out there. They introduced me to Big U, and uh, he's like, we're gonna play his album for you, the album. So the album that y'all heard was a totally different album. They played the album for Big U, I even made that nigga cry. Heaven was on there though, the Dead Homie song, because mm -hmm. he cried on the song. But besides that, like, his main question when I left the room was, where's this nigga from? Because they couldn't figure out Broadway. They didn't, you know, I was yelling it on the album. The first, the album, nigga, I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, where he from? And so when he asked that question, that kind of like threw a wrench in what DTP had planned for me. Because he was like, because Big E was like, you might want to get that nigga security and make sure he going to be straight and make sure, you know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. 
And so I got a call in the office and they was like, Will, we like to change your album. And I was like, the fuck, you know what I'm saying? So I ended up doing a whole new album real quick. And I was, I was happy with it, but it was just like, like I had Neo, you know what I'm saying? It was dope, but it was just like, that's not really what I was trying to aim for at first. Like, the so. Album, the Connect is the one you're talking yeah. about. That was your first. I had to like album. reconnect that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you was when when you was out pushing that album and you was out working on it. Like so, so when you was with DTP, was was it? Were you like working with the artist Ludacris? Were you working with Shaka the executive? Were you working with Luda the That's executive? That's a good fucking question. Like who That's are you? That's a great question. I'm gonna tell you this. So DTP was split in threes. You had Shaka Zulu, Jeff Dixon, and Ludacris. And they all have their favorite artists. You know what I'm saying? Ludacris' favorite artist was a group that never came out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was taking these niggas on tour, doing all these things called Block Exchange. You know what I'm saying? They was cool little niggas from Chicago. But, um, and uh, Shaka Zulu fucked with me hard. Don't get me wrong, he the one that actually got me signed. But Jeff Dixon was my nigga though. You know what I'm saying? He was the nigga that had the office in Def Jam. He was the nigga that I was making sure you know, he the one I he how I met LA Reed and you know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, Willie that he the nigga that told me when you get money, he's a street, he's a street nigga out of them. You know what I'm saying? He's like, when you get money, bro, make niggas think you broke all the time. He didn't want to talk me that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, make he say, see nigga, my legs ashy and all kind of shit. Nigga, I'm a millionaire. You know what I mean? So yeah. so he he the one taught me that from the beginning. So um when I went to Jeff, Jeff was really making shit work, but they was like, yo, when we put this album out. Um, we're gonna have to kind of do it like Ace Hood because Ace Hood was my counterpart. That, me, Ace Hood, Big Sean, Wiz Khalifa, who's all in that division? J Rock. Because J Rock, uh, Top Dog was pushing J Rock harder than Kendrick at that time. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. J Rock, yeah. you know. J Rock, all these niggas I'm naming is my niggas. Like, yeah. we all came up at that. That that same, that same, we was going to the same interview. Yeah, y'all was the in that same, same You know, class, we was on a, a, a dub tours together. You know what I'm saying? That dub tour was dope. We ain't got to that yet. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. You know, Go um, back. So, uh, so I was seeing how, you know, Khaled was like repping his artists and how these other niggas was repping their artists. And at that time, Lula had, I think he had like a, a beef kind of with his artists when I got some. Because before I got there, they was like, yeah, man, you know, Lula used to, Get them niggas 10,000 here, 20,000 there, 30,000 there, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? I used to hear these stories and shit. I wasn't worried about that part, but I was just saying, like. Yeah. And, uh. Do you think Luda I, got behind your project or even pushed it or even? No, Luda, Luda got behind my project, but Luda got offended because I asked him to re rewrite a verse before. And that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? You asked him to rewrite that's why a verse? He did, that's why he ended up not getting on the album. You know what I'm saying? We had this song. And he was on me at first. Like, he was really like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it was just, at first it was seemed like everything I was like, I, I brought this nigga a B, a demo of my B shit. And he wanted, he wanted them beats. He was trying to, you know what I'm saying? It was like some shit like that. And then uh, I started working with Bangladesh out there because Tiffany was managing Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And that was my favorite producer in the, in the world, nigga. I don't give a fuck who was making beats, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, he did, li, 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 he did that beat for Lou. man, you know, I know. Yeah. I'm, but. We ain't talking about Bangladesh. We're okay. talking about you. So keep tying it all together. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm yeah, trying keep to. keep tying it together. So, people, so, I'm on a journey with so, you. So when I'm Luda, with you. So when Luda, when he, uh, when he heard I was working with Bangladesh, he heard the demo. You know what I'm saying? He saw I was working with Bangladesh. And uh, it was a song. He's like, I want to be just like that. I want to be like that. Like, uh, I did the song called Eskimo. I already did the song. I did the song out here with Phrase. Like, you know, Phrase helped me with the hook. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Phrase. Yeah, big Phrase. I did Eskimo, and then when he heard Eskimo, he just wanted to just get on it. <laughs> he was like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so, but on the album, he did a verse, and when he did a verse, it just didn't sound like Luda to me, bro. Because the first time I met him, when I when I write or when I used to record my nigga, I used to just ask people to leave the studio just because I just used to like just be with the engineer.